it's the next level. Hey, my name is Ross Marquand and I play Red Skull. You are listening to Panels to Pixels podcast. Check it out. I'm grateful Destiny brought you to me. Marilka brought me to you. Oh, no, Rilke. Rilke works for me. Now and then. On matters of great import. A reclusive sorcerer who uses an alias and hires a young girl to procure him a witcher. You don't want my monster. You want me to kill yours. Very clever. Indeed. What kind? The worst kind. The human kind. Its name is Renfrey. panelers welcome back to the show i'm mark and i'm steve and this week we start our journey into the witcher that is on netflix and just to give you a fyi this will be a spoiler filled podcast as we continue our on our journey with the witcher so steve and i have watched all eight episodes uh, like binged watched it once through and then we did a rewatch so we get some like really good notes and unfortunately i had to watch it almost like each episode like three times for the first two episodes to get my bearings but if you have not watched the actual episodes or have not watched the witcher what are you doing here just you know come back after you've watched it and just listen to us then and then send some feedback most people listening i think have time to binge some things oh yeah <laughs> right now big time so. <laughs> we all do <laughs> And watch it again and again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I guess technically for me, this was a third watch because I watched the first four episodes several months ago, but then stopped after the fourth. And I'll explain that later on in the podcast. But so for me, it was really I, I watched I've watched these first two episodes probably three times now. Yeah, that in and total. you and you probably make a lot more sense of what's going on. There's there's something in each episodes. Yeah, because. Honestly, uh, I'll get into it later, but it was a hard watch for me because I used to be a big fantasy fan and I used to read all these different like fantasy and play Dungeons and Dragons. There's so much to keep track of, almost like Game of Thrones. And I had a hard time with that, too, in the very beginning. And it took me a few watchings of each season to really catch up and get to know who's who and who's what and what they do. Yeah. You know, it's especially when we have in this particular show where we almost well, and I'll get into it in, in into some of my points, I think, when the, just the nature of how this show is working each episode and each of the different storylines. Yeah, definitely. So the synopsis for The Witcher Season 1, Episode 1, which is entitled The End's Beginning, states, Hostile townsfolk and a cunning mage greet Geralt in the town of Blaviken. Ciri finds her royal world upending when Nilfgaard sets its sights on Sintra. Very cool. Yeah. And it, like I said, uh, it was, it was hard. You know, it was, the first watching was a pretty cool one. But to to see this one, you know, uh, I had to watch it again. And mm -hmm. it, it's just a matter of figuring out people's names, where they came from, and what they do, which is pretty cool. Yeah, once 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 you slide into an understanding of how each story – I mean, the first thing you need to realize is that there are – at least in, in this episode, we have two storylines. In the next episode, we're going to get the third storyline yeah. brought in. And so once we get that understanding that each episode is going to contain a bit of each of these storylines, and as long as we can tell when we've shifted from one storyline to the next, that will help you keep things in perspective. Now, there's some issues with the ages of people and the fact that it, apparently Geralt doesn't age the same way as normal. Since he's a mutant, he doesn't age the same way normally. So that's why he can appear when he drops into different story when his storyline merges with an old how now i'm confused even let's just get into our top five <laughs> all right you, you should go first 
Okay, my, so my number five is Renfrey, and this is this mysterious woman that who we meet. We meet her in this episode. We see that she's a mutant. She's uh, she has this resistance to magic. Now she's only in this episode, and she's briefly in the last episode when they do a flashback. So really, we don't get a lot about this, but in this episode, we get quite a bit because what we find out is, and this is what we'll find out throughout the rest of the episodes, is that Geralt's storyline in each episode is basically. It's an episodic. He, he has a task to do. He has something going on that he's got to fulfill, and then he does it. And each episode, now, don't get me wrong, some of those tasks are serialized into the overall plot, but each episode is going to ba- basically give us another moment in, in his life, basically, from beginning to end, a little story of his that, that later on the Bard is going to sing about. The only thing that does go through his, I think uh, several of the episodes mention the girl in the woods. We're going to hear that mentioned several times during his story, his storyline in each episode. So that's really where my number five was, was just Renfri, this woman born, you know, born during an eclipse and, and she was destined to kill this wizard or some weird destiny. And so the wizard sends Geralt to kill her. She sends Geralt to kill the wizard <laughs> and, and he ends up killing the, the girl and getting run out of town. Yeah. It, it's kind of, it's like all over the place. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. And it's like, a, you need a map. In order to mm-hmm. figure this one out. And even if you have a map, you can't figure it out. Like, I, I tried that. There's a couple of things you can Google that will give you timelines and stuff, and I didn't. I still didn't. couldn't figure it out. Yeah. I usually just accept things as I see them, and if yeah. I'm interested, I really just go with the flow. But I try to pinpoint yeah. all the key interest things that I like. If I see something interesting, I'm going to hold on to it. And, you know, the idea of Geralt and Renfri, mm-hmm. the Minstrel, Siri, Sintra, all of them. You know, and Yennefer, you know, all these characters that we we eventually meet. I, I just, like, was attracted to the idea of these characters. Yeah, yeah. So what's your number five? My number five would be, you know, with Geralt, it, it seems to be that he's on a constant quest within this show. And I think that spans along even in novels and the, the video game, as it were. But mm-hmm. in this way, they concentrated into one solid story for the first season. To me, it was like a series of adventures that he accumulates a pretty much a variety of characters, you know, to encounter during his journeys within this world. You know, it drives the story, but they all kind of, you know, intersect in yeah. certain ways. Very reminiscent of the adventures of Hercules way back mm-hmm. when, or even Xena. Right. And I really liked it. It, it caught my uh, interest at that point because I'm like, oh, they're basically bringing in this person. It looks like they could be an evil person or this person could be the comic relief of, you know, it's like, oh, that's person. Oh, that person reminds me of Yolis or Gabrielle. You know, I'm looking at these characters and similarities and usually those are tropes within certain stories like this. And I'll get into a book that I was into way back when in my high school days and it's a very old book and in a very old series very similar the way it was formulated in the plot and the Mm. different stories and stuff uh so my number four is just we get once we get the introduction of these multiple timelines in here and and this is why i stopped watching a few months ago because i got (laughs) spoiled on the fact that there were multiple timelines even though i didn't pick up on it we do hear there's a moment during the banquet when Siri says to her grandmother that you you won your first battle at, I think it was, I don't know, I'm butcher the pronunciation, Hochabuzz or Hachabuzz or whatever, Hochabuzz, mm-hmm. when she was her age. And then later we hear Rinfrey tell Geralt that, oh, Queen Kalinthe has just won her first battle at Hochabuzz. And so that's our first glimpse, our first realization that, oh, these two stories are taking place many years apart at Mm -hmm. least i think one estimate said 40 years that seems pretty accurate maybe but uh so i I thought that was it was interesting introduction in in the fact that i was able to catch it because it was my third time watching it i actually caught those two different lines in the actual show and so it was it was nice to recognize that and go okay now we understand that everything that's happening with siri is basically in the future Mm -hmm. of what we see happening with Geralt. That Geralt, everything that's happening happening to him has already happened when we get to Ciri's storyline. And eventually, and I'll talk about it in the next episode, when we get to Yennefer, we never do find out exactly where her storyline is in regards to the other two at this point, I don't think. Yeah, exactly. It's Like I said, it's all over the place. And 
you know, the Queen Galante thing, we see those things like the the winning and everything else. Mm-hmm. At, at yeah, and it's cool because then you realize when we get when we get later on, and again, we're talking about this as we've seen all eight episodes. When we get to the banquets, ballads, and battles yeah. episode, we're going to actually see that moment when. Calinthe and Geralt meet for the first time and that whole law of surprise thing, which I'm sure we'll get to when we get to that episode. But then, of course, we see the culmination of all that in episode eight when we see the flashbacks and we see how Geralt was involved in what was going on. And now we understand the line when Mousicor bursts in the room and goes, he's escaped. And, you know, for us, the first time you watch episode one, you don't know who that is that he's talking about. Yeah. But then when we get to episode eight, we realize that he's talking about Geralt. So, yeah, hmm. that was a cool catch that when I caught that, I was like, oh, that's the same scene from the last episode. So, that was <laughs> yeah, cool. yeah. You know, like when we see them throwing bones and we get to see in the last episode, we're going to see Geralt watching her playing the, the knuckle bones game with the boys and exactly like that. So, yeah. Well, my number four would be Arian being someone who was alive, but. Really? <laughs> I think it was just something that was made up, but someone has taken on the mantle within this episode for a reclusive sorcerer to be under that particular alias, which leads the Witcher to his journey into, you know, to find Renfrey and to kill Renfrey. That whole exchange was weird, and I still don't understand fully, really what the point of it was, except for just to, again, just another indication that this is happening in the past because there's going to be that line late i think it's in the next episode when what's his name the wizard boy tells yennefer or says to somebody oh they used to lock up girls in towers and stregobor says oh i used to lock girls up in towers and stuff so so we get this kind of this interesting again it's just another one of those points that that reveals to us that these are multiple storylines and that but really, again, I think we see Stregobor one more time, but it's only through flashback or something at the very end. Again, I don't I don't think, unless we're going to encounter him again, I don't remember. Maybe in the second season, too. That's what I was thinking. I don't remember. Yeah, the rest yeah of he them. could come. He, yeah, he could come play. He could, you know, have a play into the. I think what, what we're going to find is because we both, we binged these eight episodes so quickly, like I watched them over a couple of days. You said you watched them over just a couple of days this week. Mm-hmm. What we're going to find is as we're rewatching these other ones, Things are going to jump out of us, and we're going to go, oh, yeah, that was in whatever, one of these episodes. We, so, so I think Stregobor might come back, but I'm not 100% sure. That would be cool if they did. Yeah. Is that all of your number four? Just Irian and Stre- the Irian Stregobor thing? Yeah, that was okay. it. Because that leads right into my my number three, which is just the use of magic in this episode. We see, you know, Stregobor, he's got lots of magic going on inside his kind of tower. We see Mousak as he uses his magic to try to defend Sintra until he fails and Siri asks him that question, well, how long will it last? And he goes, it'll last as long as I last. You know, we see both Renfrey and Geralt use magic during that fight. We see him using those like push things. And then yep. I even think there was a moment where they like did something together. And then of course, at the end of the episode, we get, or towards it, we, we see it twice in this episode. I think we see it once when she shakes the glasses. And then at the end, when she, he, she kills the guy or she blows back the guy on the horse. We see this kind of banshee power hmm. that she has there. And that's that's cool because that's another one of those things that, again, and I don't think it was in this episode, but I think we're going to see it in when we see this episode, when we see these scenes from this episode play out again later in the season is when her grandmother says something like, oh, I thought it had skipped you, or yep. like it skipped me or, or something like yeah. that. You know, yeah, when I she remember does that, the, yeah. The glasses thing. So uh, just that thought of that magic is present, but it's not like, it's not a huge part of the plot, but it is a it is a big part. Uh, it, it's yeah, it's not, it's a part of the plot, but it's not huge. It's not, it's, it's just there. It's just thought, there. It's just common. <laughs> yeah, I, I found it kind of interesting. It was just one of those things that people just accepted that, oh, this is, they're just doing this. You yeah, know? I know. So you're number three? My number three? Well, Ciri's mutant power is being used, but she's always trying to be elusive with them. And this is something that happens during the whole season, we see. But it just becomes a little bit more as she accepts it over time. She's able to be elusive with certain situations as she understands them and develops them, in my opinion. Yeah, that's another one of those things that you wonder if she's – if that moment with the glasses where she almost breaks the glasses – 
if that's the first time ever that she's used it. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's that, That's kind of the impression I got. But then there at the end, she kind of reacts in to make that chasm open up between her and the guy. But then we're going to see in a, a later episode where she's going to kill some guys with it. So, you know, she it's going to grow into her. So Yeah, it's it's like kind of being a mutant in the X-Men or New Mutants where, you know, mm -hmm. you wind up growing into your powers and understand and know how to use them. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's what we're seeing with this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that brings us to my number two. Yes. Uh, it's just the fall of Sintra in, in general. We're going to hear about this throughout several of the episodes where people are going to talk about the fall of Sintra. They're going to talk about that Sintra hasn't fallen yet. So we're kind of going to get these hints of where episodes occur in the timeline kind of by this battle and i thought it was interesting that, that we have all these suicidal people in the queen's court and they're all like some of them are taking poison one guy like stabs himself in the neck the queen throws herself off the window she does a game of thrones uh, kind of thing <laughs> yeah, out the know, window yeah. there and then poor laszlo he just wanted to protect the the princess and he gets an arrow in his neck for his efforts so and mousak gets captured which we don't we don't find out about until later at the end. We just see Mousat gone. Yeah. You know, we see him stop and he tells Laszlo, Oh, take care of the princess. I'm gonna fight here. And then we don't see him again until like episode seven or maybe eight. I don't remember when we see his kidnapping and we see the doppelganger guy kind of take over his identity. It's just that that this whole idea of you know, Nilfgaard, and I think even Siri says this during this episode or the second episode, she says Nilfgaard doesn't take any prisoners, hmm. and that's why everybody's committing suicide and, and stuff. Yeah, they, they pretty much give you a brief explanation as to why they did what they had to do. Yeah. And it was like, nope, nope, I'm not going to be caught. <laughs> Done. Yeah, Kill exactly. Yourself. <laughs> uh, my number two would be the that battle scene was pretty cool to see. It just kind of gave me kind of throwbacks to like Game of Thrones and things like that, or even, you know, Lord of the Rings with the battle itself. You know, I, I just love that kind of aspect. I miss that kind of element like we had from all those shows and those movies. Mm -hmm. Very cool. That was it. <laughs> so my number one uh, is is the fight with Renfri and, and her men there at the end. And, and I love that he knocks the arrow out of the air with his sword when the guy shoots it at him. And uh, just that whole fight between him and Renfri as they go back and forth. And she says something like, or, you know, she, he, she pulls her sword and he says, well, if we cross swords, I won't be able to stop. And she's like, I, won't, I don't want you to stop or something like that. And yeah. so they, they go at it and finally he, he kills her with the silver the silver knife saying silver is is for monsters but i just like in general we got a lot of elements in this episode of what the series is going to show us like you said we got a big battle and we got a little battle we got yeah. a quest we got some magic we got the the princess on her own so it was really a good this first episode was a really good setup for the rest of the season Oh, definitely. Uh, it definitely was a good setup. And the humor itself that they throw in there within the show itself, you don't see it as much in the first episode, but in the second episode, you definitely do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So what's your number one for this episode? Well, my number one would be your number two at that time. You're talking about everybody just giving up their lives because of, you know, the futility, the, the queen just throwing herself over. I found that all interesting and very, very cool for the fact that it, it's a, a big setup for what we're going to see later on. And, you know, it, it's putting everything into play to what they need for the story, even though it's all over the place and, yeah. and no time jumps, but yeah, you know, it is time jumpy, not like an Avengers movie or something, but in a sense where we it, it just jumps like from history to future of what's going on, so you get a an idea of what's going on within each character that Geralt is involved with and where his place is and where his actions created certain reactions, you know? Right. And then of course the end fight scene with Renfrey. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah, she she was hot. <laughs> Mary, Liz Mary Elizabeth Winstead hot, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. So you got a couple of quotes here? Uh yeah. The one the first one would be The Witcher stating, Evil is evil, Stregobor. Lesser, greater, middling. It's all the same. I'm not judging you. I haven't only done good in my life either, but now I have to choose between one evil and and another, then I prefer not to choose at all. And, and that was after Strigobor states, killing Renfri is a, the lesser evil. 
Yeah, it's funny that she says the same thing to him. She says that killing killing Stregobor is the lesser evil. Yeah. So the only other one I would have would be pretty valid hide bastard truths. The way the minstrels seem to exploit the greater things within victories without the truth. And mm-hmm. it just made me think because now we you know, we, we come to see a minstrel that's involved with Geralt. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Very cool. Um, well, this last one, I think these these additional notes we have really is, is both of us is really the kind of the same thing. Yeah. Is just the fact that the wizard wanted Rinfrey's body and he got it. And so I wonder, that's one of those things that I wonder if that's going to be a setup for, you know, episode two, uh, episode two, season, season two. two. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that we're going to see something about when he when he dissected her body or or whatever so that might be interesting and we don't really see anything of that too no that's what i'm saying is it's it's got it's it's just kind of left open so it makes me wonder if we're going to see it again but also recognizing that this moment where he gets her body is like 40 years prior to what we're seeing in the series storyline yeah so you know, so that's one of those things where where is season two going to go back and forth between that this same timeline? Is it going to give us a deeper history of Geralt? Is there going to be less tension if they do that? Because we know, obviously, at the end of episode eight, when he and Siri meet up, we realize that, okay, their storylines are eventually going to merge, even though, you know, they're several years apart, several decades apart. Yeah. So we know that there was, there had to be a lot of that went on, but is it going to make less tension for season two if they try to show us what happened between, what happened before he met up with Siri? Because we, we would have no, there'd be no tension, there'd be no suspense there because we know, oh, he's going to survive because we know he, he lives 40 more years at least. Yeah, exactly. And the question is literally for the other characters that we encounter. And mm-hmm. Like you stated before with uh, Renfrey, he might have killed her, but with magic and how it is, yeah, who knows? can she come back? And yeah, will she be in the same form? You know, who knows? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So episode two was titled Four Marks, and the synopsis for this is bullied and neglected Yennefer accidentally finds a means of escape. Geralt's hunt for a so-called devil goes to hell, and Ciri seeks safety in numbers. <laughs> so why don't you start this time, Mark? Sure. My number five would be the portal that Istrid uses is supposedly untraceable, but we don't find out who he's afraid of until later. But this is a portal that we don't see again within the show ever, really, from my understanding. Remember, he just bites the flower... And it's something that's untraceable, but yet when Yennefer does it, she's traced all over the place. A lot of the other mages are able to find her just the same. Yeah, this was my number five as well. Just the whole idea of portaling is that we're seeing all these different, there's almost like you said, there's like these different kinds of portals. There's different ways to portal. With Yennefer, the first time she does it, she just disappears, right? Yeah. She's underneath, they're underneath that bridge or whatever. Those bullies are on top of her and she just disappears. Like she just, you know, what is it? She just trans teleported away yeah you know it was like innate for her or something yeah and she just appears in that cave but we never see her do that type of portaling again we never see her just disappear after that every time we see they do this kind of wave of their hand thing kind of like what istrid did and they open up a portal but yet the fact that istrid says oh well this portal can't be tracked but like you said then later in the later episodes we're going to see the older yennefer the the beautiful Yennefer making all these portals and this guy is tracking her the whole way. And so it was, it was a little, it was a little weird. You know, I understand we had to have these two characters meet Istrid and Yennefer, but it just seemed kind of weird because then he sends her home and he doesn't really help her any. Cause he's like, well, the way you did it, you can be tracked and I'm going to send you back on a way you can't be tracked. Mm. Well, but then the witch still finds her. So <laughs> exactly. he didn't really help her, help her at all. Anyway. Yeah, you know, I know. You know un- unless the unless the only thing he was doing was really trying to hide his portal. Yeah, his his intervention there or whatever. So it was it was a weird scene. It was a cool introduction to Yennefer and Istrid in this relationship that we're gonna see for the next few episodes go forward. But uh, yeah, I'm with you. It was a little it was a little strange that this the whole portaling thing doesn't seem consistent. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. So, yeah, my number four would be Yennefer's beginnings that we see, but in this case, as she 
uh, the show tells us this is her story, which we find out later who she is and what she can do. So later on, if you're not paying attention and you didn't, you know, you were doing dishes, so who knows what <laughs> during the scene and you see it later on, doesn't really look like the same person at all, in my opinion. Very different in contrast. This is basically her story and we, we find that out. The mirror scene is from what I could see, is duplicated at the end of the season, but she does not break the mirror later on. Uh, in this case, she does break it because she's a, you know, she doesn't like her looks or what she's become. And by that time, when we see her later on, she accepts it and understands it, but that's way later on in the season. But it's a complete difference it's like as if she was born with these these abilities to do these things like a mutant and it's pretty much a mage style but she struggles with learning and everything during the training of becoming you know i i don't know if you would call it a magician a sorceress or what but yeah just a mage a, a, a whatever sorceress that's that's kind of yeah. this was kind of my fourth one my fourth point as well is just the whole this this third storyline that we that we're being introduced to and that we never do find out exactly where this part of the story Story lines up with Geralt. So we know by the end that they're all going to, we're going to have the fall of Sentra and then they're going to move on to Sodden. And when they move on to Sodden there in episode seven and eight, that's when we, we have our storylines all merged together. Yeah. And we have Geralt meeting Yennefer, we have Geralt meeting Siri and all that. But as far as, we don't know how many years went in between those things. So, we, I mean, on one hand, we can maybe kind of say that what's happening with Yennefer is close to the time of what's happening with Geralt because she talks about the elves uprising and uh, he talks about the elves uprising. And he kind of, you know, in, the, in episode, in this episode, he encounters Philolandrel or blah, 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 dang, dong, uh, <laughs> the, the elven king. Um, I don't know how to say his name. Um, he encounters that guy and and so we see that kind of moment and then we also have this Istrid talking about the slaughter of the elves and talking about when the elves gave up their land mm -hmm. and so maybe what's happening with Yennefer is a few years before the elves or you know again it's it's one of those weird things because we know that there's another elf uprising because that's what the family that takes Siri in they talk about the kid says that his brother was killed by elves and he's got all those elf ears there's going to be another elven uprising that's going to bring us to this point as well oh definitely and I, I look forward into something like that we do yeah. get to see dwarves at certain point in this season yeah. So I, I like the idea of, like, we get to see elves. We actually do see other strange beings mm -hmm. through Geralt's uh, travels, too. Right. So I, I'm I'm looking forward to whatever else we get. You know, hopefully yeah. season two will open up a whole new realm of what we don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. So what was your number three? My number three? Uh, that would be Geralt and the Minstrel. <laughs> mm. I, I knew they would be together for the long run of the show in some way and shape or form. I, I saw that a mile away. Uh, it, to me, it was a comical sidekick. It's uh, it's always needed for any show to give it some sort of levity for the action and the drama that's going on within it. And they do. And, and it works. And I think it works. And I, I enjoy stuff like that. It, it's not campy humor. It's not as campy as, I would say, Hercules and Xena, but has that kind of tribute to it and i just enjoy that kind of thing and we see it in future episodes as well based upon Geralt. and there's certain little things that if you look at Geralt doing and everybody has a meme for it or a gif going on with the yeah he, he does a lot of that that's the honest trailers for this for this talked about that as well so. um this was actually my number two so i'll jump to my number two uh to join with you about the bard and, and again, this is another hint, hint of our different storylines that we get here because he talks about the elves retreating to the mountains after they bequeathed the land to the humans. And, you know, that's what Istrid had talked about is it, what Istrid talked about also is that, oh, the elves taught the humans magic and then the, ma and then the humans overthrew them. Yep. So he also mentions that, that uh, Geralt is the butcher of Blaviken. So we know that this episode happens after episode one we don't know how much time has you know enough time has passed that the tale of what he did at blaviken has spread but it's still soon enough that people remember it it's not quite so you know so it just it, it just lets us know that chronologically episode two is after episode one or at least the Geralt storyline yes yeah. 
Yeah, they're trying to keep it in some sort of continuity. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that brings us to your number two. Yeah, that, that would be the Magic Academy that Yennefer was brought into. <laughs> she tries so hard, but in the end is able to make it work for herself. But odd how a person who has pretty much a mutant in the real world becomes the mage and achieves her own ascension in a certain way, you know, mm -hmm. within that realm. But she fails a lot during these tests. But then, you know, the other students wind up, you know, at the end, not doing so well. And, and the final one is where she pretty much makes it where they couldn't. Yeah, that whole, and that's where I'm, where I'm confused about how long that went on. And, and I had a little bit of this in my notes as well, just this whole Magic Academy and like some of these trials they go through, like that lightning trial where they're trying to catch the lightning in the bottle and you see some of the girls yeah. fail. Some of the girls at the end are walking out with lightning in their in their little bottles. And then, of course, we have the four girls that get turned into eels that apparently are not going to ascend. And then, you know, the next episode, we're going to have, she's going to go through this ritual where she changes herself from the ugly Yennefer to the beautiful Yennefer that we're going to see for the rest of the, the season. Yeah. So, yeah, this magic, and that's why I said we don't really know where this storyline is in relation to the others because we don't know how long she's been there. We don't know how long it lasted. We don't, we don't really know. There's not a real clear understanding of, like you said, she's obviously she's some kind of mutant because she can use magic, but it's not a pure, it's almost like it's a latent kind of like a, if I were to equate it to like, oh, I hate to say this even, like equate it to like the Jedi and Star Wars, like, it, you know, some of them had a little stronger relation to the force, some had a little less relation to the force, that kind of thing to where, but you could learn to have a better, stronger relationship with the force, that kind of thing. And so yeah, I think that's, that's, true. that's yeah. what we're, what we're looking at here is that some people have a, and that's what, like, even the, the witch, what, what does she call herself? The chancellor or whatever of the, the tower of Iratuza. She says some mages are like this girl and they keep their emotions in check. And then some mages are like us, we use our emotions. And that's really, that's that first moment when Jennifer realizes that she sees in her that she actually is going to be a mage. So, mm. okay. So that brings us to my, my number two, which, which I switched your, with my yeah, number three. Number three. <laughs> and so that's the family that takes Siri in. Uh, I already talked a little bit about it, but uh, you know, the kid says that the elf King had tried to take Sintra a year ago and Siri calls herself Fiona, but they recognize that her cloak is one of the expensive cloaks that their father made mm -hmm. and that their father was killed in the, during this battle of Sintra. So in, it's, this family kind of had me confused for a bit because really we have this, this mother who seems like she's real sweet and she's real, oh, I'm going to get him to make your, your shoes, to fix your shoes for you. And you go, don't worry, he's one of the clean ones. You know, and you're just like, what? And like you said, he's like a dwarf. And so then there at the end, he knifes the mother and yeah. the, the, the son runs off and gets killed. And then the elf, the rat boy, I don't remember what his name was. Now he saves Siri and is going to take her, you know, away from all of this. But it, just that whole, that whole scene was, it was kind of interesting. It gave us a little glimpse into you know not everything was hunky dory with the members of Calenthe's kingdom not everybody loved her as we we seem to think but at the same time gosh it was just uh it just kind of a messed up thing to happen to him oh yeah big time <laughs> so i think we're at your number one yeah my number one would be well you we already touched on it before when you said it the elves an interesting story to them in my opinion but they don't make an appearance, but we don't really see or hear anything about them later on. We just get this whole story. Yeah. And uh, that's something I'm looking forward to next season. Yeah, this was not my number one as well, just the the elves and what, what we're going to see of them going forward. Because he does tell them that they need to leave and rebuild, and then he gives him the money, and the bard says something about that. Well, so you just gave them the money that the guy paid you, and, and he's like, yeah, because I don't want them to, whatever, be in a war or whatever. And so, it, yeah, it feels like there might be something there setting up for the next season. But at the same time, you also want to go, well, but why give us this story if you're not going to give us more? 
<laughs> it, it's a you know, tease. We, we, yeah, we, <laughs> we don't really get anything. And I think that's really what, what, we, what we're getting with Geralt's storylines. A lot of his storylines, like I said, are, are episodic. We're just going to get this little glimpse into his. We're going to get a quest. We're going to well, get a mission. Is, yeah, basically the whole series is a story of him. So all his encounters right. in this world. So Right. Yeah. yeah. And it, it all intertwines. And I wouldn't be surprised if stuff from this season leak into next season or even season three because they're just mentioned. You know, yeah, 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 we won't know until later on. Yeah. So they're looking forward, you know, to moving this along, which seems to be good because it is a popular show, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that brings us to quotes. Yeah. You go first. Uh, I just thought it was funny. And I laughed every time when the bard was, was giving us the bard is giving us all this exposition. And then he actually says it. He says, there I go again, delivering exposition. <laughs> so I thought that was really cool that, that there's so many times that I hear podcasters and even we've said it before is, is why are they giving us so much, you know, Oh, don't tell us, show us. But this was really a funny way of, of telling us things and then realizing kind of with the joke that yep. they're like, yeah, we, we recognize that we're telling you a lot of things instead of showing you a lot of things here. Yeah. We're breaking the fourth wall right now within yeah. our own show, telling you yeah. what you're thinking. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought, it, I thought it was pretty cool. So mine would be torque the Sylvan stating, did your mother F a snowbird when he's attacking the <laughs> witcher? <laughs> yeah, that was, that was, that was funny when he said, is your mother screw goat and, did your sc- and yeah, snowbird exactly. and that whole, yeah, that whole exchange between the two of them was, was pretty funny. I think we talked about some of my notes. I did think it was funny when he headbutted, when Geralt headbutted the elf. I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. And then the, the plant that Istrid ate, he called it Thanenweld. And uh, I looked it up briefly on the Witcher wiki, and basically it's it's a plant. He he tells us everything. He says it's basically a plant that, that grows where elder blood is spilled. And it's a plant that if you encounter it apparently in the game, you need to make sure you pick it because it's, like, really rare and it's worth worth stuff. So Yeah, it gives you points or levels and stuff or like something. that. Or yeah. something, yeah. Yeah, power-ups. <laughs> <laughs> My one point would be, uh, Geralt is very touchy about Roach, the horse. He has an attachment to that horse. And, and he we... names every horse Roach. Yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it can't be the same horse now. It can't. Like, not over 40 you. years. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but I th- I find it funny, though. He, he, has a, he has something to that name, though, but why would you call it after a bug? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> just joking. I, I'm pretty sure it's just a real name. All right. So just our overall talk of the episodes as a whole. You got some stuff there. Sure. Uh, so far, I think uh, uh, after my first rewatch, I look at it like a bunch of other books that I've read as a teenager. And I mentioned it before in the very beginning. I loved the Michael Moorcock series, Elric of Melonbone. It was about an albino elf prince that was cursed and bound to his sword stormbringer and he had multiple adventures encountered so many people along the way you would read about people from past books into later on books the show is pretty much reminiscent and very much like this it's the underlying stories that carry through the series with people he encountered consistently i just enjoy this kind of you know, kind of writing, but this takes a lot of watching and reading to keep up mm-hmm. with me, even because I had the subtitles on while watching it. And I think it has to do something with my Apple TV because within the same house, my mom's got the network and I gave her my old Apple TV and she puts on subtitles. So I guess through shared networking, your, your preferences go across all these mm-hmm. devices. So yeah. I, I got it. So I didn't mind it. I was actually, I was like, Oh, what did he say? Oh, I could get that quote easily now. But yeah, that's what I do, man. I, I, I leave the subtitles on most of the time. Yeah, but I'm a slow reader, and as a visual story with this show, I can understand why some people who are not familiar with the books or the game get lost, and you'd probably have to watch it a few times because you're really enamored with it, and you have to watch it like a few times just to get it. I struggle with it, but I really do enjoy it. Original, it's not really completely original, but it's interesting you know, to me and it grasps my attention and, and I enjoy it and I love the idea of it. Now I sound like Yoga, Yoda, you know, <laughs> I, original it is not, but interesting it is. You know, it's yeah, like, I, I think I remember that, that's that series of books. Uh, and I thought he was a dro elf. He wasn't albino. I thought he was like a dro, wasn't he? 
No, he was he was albino. albino. Maybe, okay, he was okay. white. He was white skinned. No, where... no, I remember. I remember. I just thought. I I thought for some reason he was a dro. I thought, but that's fine. I'm just glad that we're that we're discussing a series that I'm excited and I'm enjoying to watch oh, and and I like. But I do I do like the the multiple things and I think from what I've read they didn't like you don't need to have read the books or played the games to really get what was going on. Like even that thin and well thing that I mentioned is we can tell from the show that this is an important flower, whatever it was, even it's only mentioned one, this one time. And then I think we see her use it again in one of the episodes. I think we see her take a bite of something and it, eat some of it and it gives her like extra strength powers yeah. or, or something. So that's really, I think that's really the whole point of them setting it up for us was showing us that, that so she knows, oh, this is a plant that I can use to kind of boost my powers. Exactly. And honestly, like you said, you don't really necessarily have to read the books. You don't necessarily have to have played the game. Yeah. But uh, many people I do know, and I actually try to get him on <laughs> on the podcast, talk about it because he actually read the books or actually he read the books and then he's been listening to the audible of it. And he uh, played the all the video games and he, he was just like, no, nah, that's not my platform. I, I don't like to really speak in public. So my buddy Jason, who I work with, was like, no, nah, no, nah, you guys do it. <laughs> I'll listen to it if I can and I'll make comments. Yeah. But he enjoyed it. He loved the show. He loved the games and he loved the book. So yeah. somebody who started with it and watched the show and enjoyed it shows a lot of promise, in my opinion, because, you know, there are a lot of people who are purists about certain things saying oh the book said this and you and i were talking about that before with the walking dead and mm -hmm. to me you know i i think i got criticized on uh the actual walker stalkers podcast when i told uh one of the hosts there saying throw away your comic books throw them aside this show is going in a different direction and it and you know honestly that show is and mm -hmm. To me, I like to make the comparison just to get an idea, but I just find it fun. But yeah, you know, but with this, uh, in this case, you know, to me, I enjoy from the outside just watching the show and not even have even touched on the books or the, the game. Yeah. And hearing a perspective of that person who pretty much lived and breathed those two uh, versions and then seeing this one and saying, this is amazing. This is really cool. I loved it. Oh, did you see that scene? Oh, so that's that person. And I hear the conversations at work. And this is before I even started watching. And I I was like, you guys are making me want to watch it. And then when Steve said, hey, let's do this. I said, all right. Well, this is, this is the nudge for me to actually do it. And I really do enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> all right. So you've got some comic news there that you wanted to talk about? Sure. With the event of what's going on currently, I know we're all stuck in our houses and everything else. Comic talk, well, literally, I'm just going to tell you what's been delayed and what's been going on lately. Diamond Direct has closed its doors and there will be no direct shipments to comic book shops now at this time. So, And there's no opening time for them as well. So this is hard for all the whole comic book industry at this point. And many artists are very upset about this. Some comic shops might not even come back due to this since there pretty much is no income their stores are closed they still have to make rent they have to resort to other means if they could even do let's say delivery of comics but that would have to be previous comics not current so they would have to literally go and inventory their comic books in their shops and so what they have that's older comics and see what they could get for their clients at this point online. So that that's a big hit to the comic book industry, what's going on with this whole coronavirus or COVID-19. And it's really upsetting to me because I really don't want my comic shop going out of business. <laughs> And the next bit of news I would have would be, uh, I'm pretty sure all of you have heard this, the Black Widow movie was set back for a release date of November 6th of 2020 now. Most of the other Marvel movies that are out there that are being worked on are delayed as well. We're not sure exactly what's going on with Disney+. Plus. As far as what I've heard, they're still shooting for those dates for Falcon and the Winter Soldier and WandaVision and that's from the time that they even bumped those dates up so at least we have something to look forward to 
you know, with those particular shows for Disney Plus. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's a matter of like, we'll see what's going on. It's like we're getting bits of information here and there. Mm -hmm. um, the last part I would have would be the New Mutants has been delayed indefinitely till they make a decision on, you know, uh, the release. I just hope that they put this on Disney Plus. That's the one thing I've been looking forward to for a long time. And the more they keep delaying it, the more that people are getting frustrated. Now, mind you, this is like the movie was finished literally in the can three years ago, and they just need to release it at this point. They just need to let it go. If they can't bump uh, Black Widow, which they spent a lot of money on to Disney Plus, they should really just release New Mutants right to Disney Plus, mm -hmm. in my opinion. The main reason is, is that they bought this movie literally from Fox when they took over Fox and they, with that whole merger and everything. So they, they took it. So it's not like they really spent that much money on it. So at least it gains some sort of interest and it's some sort of new material for everybody to, you know, watch while we're stuck at home and reading comics. <laughs> so, but that that's about it for comic talk. If you guys have any information that you want to send my, our way, just send it to our, uh, our sources, which we usually leave at the very end of the the podcast uh the only podcast recommendation i really have is just continue with strange indeed for they are covering lock and key they'll be finishing it up i think they we did uh, they did episode nine this week they'll be doing episode 10 uh next week that'll finish up strange uh, lock and key season one on netflix i'm not sure what they've decided to do after lock and key yet i know they have some different options and some uh, things that they're they're making decisions on right now and so just uh keep that podcast in your in your sites strange indeed and uh, as always tv podcast industries is constantly putting out new content so yeah they finished up picard they did they finished up the card card cast finished up the card i think i'm i may jump on the penny dreadful rewatch uh and jump on with do some voicemails for penny dreadful awesome. city angels when it comes out at the end of april we'll see <laughs> I'm trying to decide right now I, which I like I, Penny Dreadful. I never got into it. I should. Same thing with Lock and Key. I, I that was one that I wasn't certain of. Yeah. But then again, I don't know. I I just have to jump into it. I guess it's one of those where it's like show a little bit of interest, yeah. watch one. If you're hooked, you're hooked. You know. Yeah, the only other podcast uh, recommendation I would give would be House Podcast to go with Jason and David. And they cover Westworld right now with season three. And I'm enjoying it. I don't know about you listeners if you actually watched the first two seasons. Season one of Westworld was amazing. Season two was great, but wow. I, would, you know, was like, I wouldn't call it great, but go ahead. No, no, but a lot of people were saying it was great. But the thing was is that I, I'm saying... In a sense, it was like I liked it. I it, it was hard to follow at times. Yes, we were all season place. two was way too confusing for me. But season three is great. Season three, so yeah, season yeah. three so far is really really good. So if you're yeah. if you gave up, go back rewatch season two. Just just get through it. It's a tough watch. Uh, I will say everything comes together at the end, but or just skim it. You know, <laughs> just go through yeah. certain episodes, yeah. skim it. But season three so far has been great. Yeah, so I would recommend uh, House Podcast on Podcast Network. So, and uh, the only YouTube recommendation I would say would be the Grin Life Collective with Michael and Jessica. They have just put out their Leonard Skinner episode where Michael went to visit the gravesite of Ronnie Van Zant and some of the other people that perished within that you know that flight. Uh, he goes to where they're buried and sees the tombstones, and it's pretty incredible to see. And they go into the history of the name of the band and the teacher that the band members named the band after within it. So I would recommend Michael and Jessica on the Grim Life Collective. They are doing live movie watches on Saturday nights now because of this whole situation. So that's a way for everybody to get together. Tonight's, well, we're filming this now on April 4th and they're doing one at midnight. So I think think michael is going to continue on with the midnight streaming so just go to youtube.com search for the grim life collective subscribe throw a thumbs up if you like the actual videos that you do see all the things that they cover and then join in on that because anybody could actually it's not you know it's not exclusive to anybody who's on their patreon or whatnot and their patreon is pretty reasonable and i you know if you really like what they do and donate you want to donate do so yeah they're pretty nice people i got a postcard from them recently and they're really nice very cool yeah so there's there's many ways that you can leave us feedback you we can be heard on spotify google play apple itunes or whatever podcast player of choice that you use to download your podcast if ratings are available hey give us a five star ten star eight star thumbs up whatever rating system they use 
they'll probably notify us and let us know that, hey, somebody gave you a review and we'll read it. You can check out our website, which is panels to pixels podcast.com. You can submit your theories and feedbacks on our Facebook group as well, which is just facebook.com slash panels to pixels. You can email us at panels to pixels one at gmail.com. That's panels to pixels one. The TO is spelled out right there in the middle, the number one at gmail.com. You can also send us a live voicemail, a live voicemail. That's that's a thing now. Um, <laughs> at uh, phone number 845-350-2095. You can also find us on YouTube. Just search for Panels to Pixels podcast and give us a thumbs up and a subscribe there. So where can you hear us other places? Well, you could hear me on The Walking Dead Talk Through with Brian Malosh on Talk Through Media. And yes, Brian is back. <laughs> Picard is over and honestly we are doing our last one this week for this particular season because we don't get the season finale we get the next to last episode of the season for Walking Dead because that's been delayed so Brian will be there so this show itself panels to pixels will always be on the next level podcast network but there will always be a link to, you know, for you guys to listen to or even dabble into the world of The Walking Dead with The Walking Dead Talk Through on our Facebook page. And you can find us for The Walking Dead Talk Through on TalkThroughMedia.com, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts and clients. That, that would also include, like, Spotify and Stitcher. So right now we are currently working on another new podcast for Talk Through Media. I kind of mentioned it a few times, but it's being called let's talk through and you could hear kyle myself and i think ruthie will be on the very first episode and we're going to be talking about galaxy quest and never surrender which is the galaxy quest documentary and the impact that it has on pop culture and that's what that whole podcast is about it's all different things within pop culture so we're going to be talking a lot of things so if you have any ideas of what you would like to talk to about when it comes to let's talk through just shoot them on over to talkthroughmedia.com. Excellent. And you can hear my voice right here. Of course, we will continue doing this podcast. We will do The Witcher episodes three and four, The Witcher season one, episodes three and four on Netflix next week, and uh, then continue on doing two episodes a week until we finish up The Witcher, and then we'll figure out what we're going to do after that. And I, of course, submit voicemails to various other podcasts that cover TV shows. Well, that's our show for tonight. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I'm Mark. And I'm Steve. And this was Panels to Pixels, and we'll see you on the next panel. Good night. Good night. Good night.